let's have a look how cross-region replication with ANF actually works. In this demonstration, we're going to set up replication between EU West and EU North. As you can see, I've got two NetApp accounts already set up. And for the demo, we're going to set up replication from a volume that is already existing in EU North called Primary Vol. So if we go to EU West, the very first thing we'll do is have to set up a capacity pool. Once you've got your capacity pool set up, you then have to create a volume. Now a quick note, your capacity pool does not have to match the original source. So if your source is ultra or premium, um, you can, to save on money for DR, use standard. So for DR, we're going to add what's called a data replication. So at this point, remember we have a source volume, so we need to create a data replication. So click data replication and we'll call this one secondary vol. We give it a performance quota just to initially start with the size. So we'll give it a match the original. Now you don't need to match the original here. You can give it a lot less performance quota. This will affect the performance you get on the destination side. So how how many how much bandwidth and I/O you'll get for reads on that particular volume. You pick the network that you want. So I'm using a hub and spoke model. Pick your subnet and then the protocol. So you'll want to match the original. So mine's an SMB volume, so that's a Windows file share. I give it the Active Directory and share name. And then I get the first question, where is the source volume ID? Now to get this really easily, click on the volume, click on properties, and you'll see there is the full resource ID that you can just copy straight to your clipboard. So you pop that in there and then you choose your application schedule. Now it's asynchronous. It can be every 10 minutes, hour, daily, weekly, or monthly. So for this demonstration, I'll go every 10 minutes. Full support for normal tagging. So if, for example, you trace who are the owners of volumes like we do in our lab, you can use your normal tags. And then hit create. Okay, and the deployment has succeeded. So at this stage, we have now provisioned a secondary volume in EU West. And let's go have a look at that. And there it is, secondary volume. But you'll notice if you have a look at the replication status, it will show as unhealthy. Now this is for security reasons. We've now set up a primary region to the secondary region. What we need to do is tell the primary region about the secondary region now. So much like before, if we go to properties on the new volume we've just created, the destination or the secondary volume, and copy the resource ID of that, go back to the primary volume and click on replication, you notice it still says, okay, you don't have any data protection volumes yet, and they're not authorized. So we're going to authorize as the owner of the primary, that it is actually okay to go and replicate to this destination. Hit OK. That will authorize the replication from primary to the secondary volume. And there we go, that's now successfully authorized. So if you refresh the page, you'll see the primary is now showing that it's healthy. However, obviously it's uninitialized. And what that means is that for the replication, it's not done a the first replication just yet. So I picked every 10 minutes. So some point in the next 10 minutes, this is going to fire and we'll see this as initialized. And that's all there is to it. You have now set up replication between two regions without having to do any deployment of virtual machines or clients to go and do the replication. It's all being done through the Azure Backbone automatically as a service di directly through Azure NetApp files.